Um, and making it to the semifinals wasn't an easy feat, but Trigger just seems to be on fire here. Again, he's showing us all that he is kind of breaking into that top North American scene. A lot of people, when they think of NA talent, they think of Estrella, they think of Neeb, they think of Scarlet. People should also be thinking of Trigger. Yeah, for sure. And condolences for Art. Made a very nice run there, as he often does in these uh, in these tournaments, in the Sparkling Tuna Cup. Uh, but Trigger was the stronger one on the day, and it is very nice to see uh, him going forward to face the winner of this game. And uh, here we are in this game, spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of the map, the Red Terran playing for Psystorm. It is Nicaract. And spawning in the top left-hand corner of Cosmic Sapphire ESL. I, I mean, just Cosmic Sapphire. God. <laughs> not even Ellie. We have ah. Ah, the Vietnamese Zerg player himself representing the Juggernauts. It is Mio Mica. Puppy Chase, I hope you're not here. I hope you're not here in the chat to have to relive the pain. You lost LE once, and now we're losing <laughs> LE all over again. No. Ah, no, we've lost her, pup. We lost her. Uh, that's the real reason why Chase isn't casting today. That's uh... <laughs> <laughs> He's smooching, but... <laughs> I love you, Chase. We're here for you, okay? Ellie may not may not be here, but we are, okay? Um, less than three. Yes, less... and we we even we feel your pain now. We know what it's like to lose an Ellie. <laughs> we know, in fact, what it's like to lose seven Ellie's. <laughs> uh, we are, of course, talking about the latter edition that is, for some reason, not tired to the end of these maps. So. Uh huh. I don't know. I'm just glad that we have new maps at all, to be honest. Yeah, it's 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 like you know, it's like nitpicking a little bit. You know, it's it's not the biggest of deals. It's just weird because it's never happened before, and it's like, what is happening over in the land of Blizzard? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh god! But we are here in our lower semi-finals in a ZBT, and there's a reason why Miyamika has his chosen name. This is the matchup that he struggles in the most. Yeah, we do see him lashing out a little bit with that name, but at the same time, Nicaract with a nice little scout here uh, is just going to distract these links a little bit. He does know it's a pull first, but he doesn't know anything else, so he will be looking to, you know, keep an eye on, uh, yeah, track these links if he can at all, just to free up his Reaper to scout into the moon. Yeah, I kind of like this because, um, as you were saying, Nicaract isn't fully aware of the commitment of how many links there are. He only saw two, but he has no fear and he moves out across the map with his Reaper. And I'm sure Mia Mika was hoping that the Reaper would stay at home. Yeah, this is a perfect response coming out from Nicaract. Does uh, manage to track all of the links, which is really important, so he can get a full scout with his Reaper. Does also mean that back at home he can skip the extra Marines that he would normally need to get and go straight into a reactor. So this is something that would normally be a little bit greedy, as you do have to have some Marines and SUVs to defend you at home if the links get across the map. But he is able to cut any extra Marines, even cut a bunker as he's able to keep the links home and see everything here. Yeah, exactly. So Miyamika doesn't end up winning the mind games. I mean, he doesn't lose anything here to the Reaper, so that's good, I guess. But in the end, the pool first didn't really pay for itself, hoping to force the Terran player to overcommit or commit a little bit more in the defense and respect the opener. Meanwhile, the Reaper is still alive, and oh, he also gets a crucial scout here. He may not get any drone kills, but again, he's just making sure that there's no like Roach Warren follow-up. Yeah, this is extremely good for Nicarash. This is exactly what you want when you're facing a pool first, is all the scouting that you can get. You want to see if it's a commitment to speed, a commitment to banelings, a commitment to roaches, anything like that. He's even able to keep an eye on the popping lava to see if there's drones or lings making. So I believe he'll be in a very comfortable position here and he can just go ahead with his standard build order. Yeah, exactly. And that standard build order is going to be the 111 into Cloak Banshees here for Nicaract. I'm um, looking at deals that damage across the map. Looking at the vision of Mio Mika, he has two overlords here. One of them out of the natural, the other kind of outside the main base. This will, or this should catch the Banshee as it moves out, but it means that he won't be able to get in and see the production. Yeah, and this is a very safe build coming out from Nicaract as well, so. Uh, won't be in any trouble if there's any roach opening or anything like that coming out from Mio, but Mio Mika actually playing this relatively standard, getting his Bane Nest at a nice safe early time, but he's made enough lings just to defect the Hellions for now, and he's just droning up comfortably. Oh, 
Yeah, exactly. You know, the Bailey Nest, just in case this happens to be like a Hellbat push or anything like that. What's interesting to me is that it is hidden. So because of that, like Necroact isn't fully aware of the tech that me and Micah is working with. We do see him go straight into a lair as well. Lair at the third base of all bases. Interesting. Yeah, it does say that the Hellions leave and immediately starts up that lair, but he is also doing a really good job, especially with this Trochi uh, natural entrance. If those Hellions ever try to commit to this natural, that's pretty much going to be their lives forfeit. They're just going to be diving to get whatever damage they can, but we are seeing Nicorak being very careful with his units so far. Oh yeah, exactly. So far he hasn't committed to anything. He's only been denying creep on the edges of the base. There we go, another tumor does go down. Meanwhile, me and Micah, again, not really fully being aware of the opener, is throwing down some safety spore crawler, so he should be safe against this Banshee. Just double checking. He never got into the main, and ooh, the Banshee gets a couple of drone kills. Yeah, very nice multitasking coming out from Nicorak here, just sharking around with the Hellions and also getting a little bit of damage with his Banshees while keeping up with the build. Uh, he did make eight Hellions, so he probably is looking to get a little bit of damage, either clean up some of these Lings or uh, commit on some of the drones, but Mio has uh, got some Banes of his own, so uh, he does have everything that he needs to defend this. Yeah, and I love this from Nicoract. Again, just target firing the creep tumors of all things. At the same time, the Hellions are looking to dive on in, but is this an overextension? The Lynx trying to get us around. He will get two Hellions. Looks like a third just barely towards the end. Yeah, not bad at all for Nicoract. Having committed to Ooh. so many uh, Hellions, he will be wanting to get some trades uh, with the army of Mio. And uh, not too bad a trade at all, just trading Lynx for Hellions. The Hellions aren't going to have too much more use apart from just safety. So uh, if they can trade favorably with things, that's perfect for him. Exactly. And once again, he dips on in, he's going to get a couple of volleys off on those lings. Doesn't get any drone damage. But again, the creep spread is almost non-existent here for Mia Micah. He's barely connecting his bases. And because of that, these Banshees are going to force a cancel of the fort. Yeah, very nice use of the Banshees here. But meanwhile, we do see something a little bit offbeat coming out from Mia Micah. He's thrown down a Hydra down. Oh yeah, Mia Micah known for his Ling Hydra timings. This is a little bit different though because there's a Bane Nest behind this, so again, he can hit a really awkward timing. Nicorect hasn't seen this, by the way. The Hydra Den also in a really peculiar location hidden in the natural base. Yeah, this is an extremely early Hydra Den, and with Nicorax pushing out with this, uh, he does have a little bit of a smaller push as well because of the 2cc that he went for to be a bit more safe at the start of the game and with him committing the tank as well this is yeah very um very unfortunate for him but hopefully he'll be able to catch on to what's happening and get out without losing too much of his supply Ooh. meanwhile he is doing a fantastic job with his multi -prom. exactly we do have hellions dipping into the third base at the same time the banshees are going ham here in the main at the same time the main army is looking to deny the fourth base wow. a fourth base a tri prong to tank that's a kill not a cancel of the fourth yeah, beautifully done there from Nicorax. Does uh, kind of gives me some ideas. It's something I haven't really seen too much before. Um, using those leftover units from the opening to set up this push. Uh, I do believe this will be a little bit of an overcommitment, having seen the Hydras already, but he does manage to get all of the Marines out, so really not too much lost there for him at all, and does manage to trade off a few of those links on his way as well. Oh, is uh, he, is he gonna, see further aggression? Yeah, is he gonna have enough at home to defend though? He has one tank here, but because of the sensor tower, he sees this coming a mile away. The Banshee's even chipping away at the army at the same time. We do have that double drop going into the main base. Queens are here to defend, but Queens are not ideal here. They're getting focused down one after the other. Yeah, Nicorax really taking it to Mio, not afraid of this timing at all, uh, using his multi-prong and his aggression uh, to pick off all these uh, just get all these little pickoffs here and there, and he's had a fantastic start to the game so far. Yeah, exactly. We'll see if me and Micah can come back in this game. We do have the tank sieging up, but again, there's only one tank. It's going to get surrounded immediately, and we see a full surround as well. Again, me and Micah, without any bailings, he takes the fight. Yeah, this is such a peculiar situation. It's very hard to judge these fights as the Terran, because you're so used to judging fights based on the Lings and Banes, but the Hydras and the DPS of the Hydras, as well as just the sheer numbers of Lynx, uh, makes it quite confusing to try to work out exactly where you stand in terms of uh, how the fight's going to go for you. Yeah. Um, and he does lose 11 SCVs due to this counter pressure, and Mio is going to commit to this fire. Yeah, he dives on top of the army, he gets a full surround. Are there enough Lings though? The Hydra's dishing out so much damage, the Lings are here to support and buffer, and it looks like Nick Rack may just barely have enough to defend. Oh, it's yeah, going to be close. This is, 
<laughs> it is so close, and this oh. is how Mio gets you. He has these very strange armies that you're not used to seeing, and it's very hard as the Terran to be able to judge these fights that you haven't really taken too many times before. And we do see that uh, Mio, having played this way before as well, obviously so many times, maybe has a little bit of an advantage when it comes to judging these fights. Wow, and the Lings, they just keep on coming. They get on top of the army. So many workers have already fallen. With the help of this tank, Nicaract is going to be able to hold on to his natural base. What's important is that his third CC did survive, but he lost so many workers. And now, the Mio Maika, hey, he, now he's ahead in the worker count. <laughs> Yeah, brilliant job there from Nikarak. Nice little micro there with the tanks just to target the Hydras as well rather than the Ling so he doesn't splash on his own units. Uh, but with that scan going down on the third and seeing that it is fully saturated, he's going to realize what a dire situation he's in and I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for a bit of an all-in. This is one of these weird situations that you can get into when you're facing Mio where you're kind of not really in a position to shove because you don't have the army but you don't really have the workers either to stay in a defensive posture mm. it's a very confusing uh place to find yourself uh, what's also a little bit confusing is is that also nicarak doesn't know the position he's in he just scanned and he saw the fourth base only just now starting so he probably feels pretty safe he probably feels like they're on an even footing economically he doesn't know that mia Micah, he took the gold and he immediately saturated it Yeah, so this third only just getting back up to situ uh, saturation for Nicaract, and Mia Micah has already taken his map control lead and converted it into an economic lead. Mm -hmm. And from here, he's probably where he wants to be with the economy. I would expect to see no more drones for a little while here. He can just mass Hydras, mass Lings, and uh, he is starting to move these Hydras in a bit of an intercepting way. Uh, meanwhile, he does have the Lings and Bains prepared on the other side as well, so very nice setup already for me and Micah. Yeah, he's set up to defend his fourth base and his southern fifth base as well, fifth and fourth even. Meanwhile, we do have a drop going into the main base, only a singular marine drop, so it's not going to deal too much damage, but it could find something because me and Micah isn't quite in position. At the same time, me and Micah looking to try and deny a fourth base, a fourth that doesn't exist. Yeah, meanwhile, on the bottom left here, it does look like Nicarak, uh, I believe it was a medevac that he sent this way to scout, or... Uh, maybe the Reaper that he had left over from the start of the game, he does see the gold base, so he will realize what kind of situation he's in. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it is a very tough situation that he finds himself in. Very good damage with the drop here, getting those four drones and getting everything out, but it's really not enough just yet. Yeah, exactly. Meanwhile, here we go. The main army is headed towards that gold base. It is scouted here by Mia Micah. Does he have enough to defend? He does have a decent amount of Ling Bane, uh, but the rest of his army actually coming in for a bit of a surround. Yeah, I really like what he's done here. He's managed to drag away all that army to the north, but there's a huge surround coming here from Mio, and I think this is just the beginning of the end for Nicarak. There's nothing he can do to get himself out of this situation. Yeah, exactly. Every single tank goes down. We have plenty of Hydras here to shut down all the Medivacs as well. Nothing is going to survive. We have one drop into the main base, and that's going to deal a lot of damage, but nowhere near as much as Mio Micah is going to push in and try to end the game. Yeah, me and Micah taking this small advantage and just running with it. And there is so little reinforcing here for Nicarak with the economic damage that he took earlier in this game. He only just got his third base up, back up to saturation, and once again, it is denied. And with all these Hydras, he might even be able to take out the base. Oh, yeah, exactly. There we go. The stutter stepping is real here for me and Micah. It looks like the CC is going to go down. Meanwhile, the SCVs are on, a, on the run, but the, the Lynx are going to be able to hunt them down as well. That one drop, by the way, got a kill of the main base, and the spawning pool is on fire. Uh, <laughs> so that one <laughs> drop did a surprising amount of damage, but even that may not be enough. Yeah, the Terran Raiders have been here, the spawning pool, it's bleeding, it's on fire, everything's going <laughs> wrong here, but uh, at the same time, it is only one drop here, so it doesn't take that much reinforcement from Mio to really shoo this away, and uh, while he is doing a lot of damage for what little commitment it is, uh, it's nothing compared to the damage that's being dealt to him on the other side of the map. Yeah, exactly. His economic situation is just in shambles. He wasn't able to shut down the gold base. It is still happily up and running here for Mio Micah. That one drop, it's already done so much. And yo, those three Marines, they want a little bit more. But as you were saying, it only takes a handful of links to, to defend against what this is. Yeah, absolutely. And we are seeing Mio even starting to tech going into the infestation pit that will unlock uh, the hive for him if he chooses to go that way. Uh, meanwhile, Nicarak had to float his fourth over to take his third once again. Mio was able to take out the previous third, take out all the SCVs that were there, so Nicarak once again reset. 
exactly, but he is undeterred. He has plus three attack, he has plus three armor on the way as well, so his bio army is going to trade incredibly efficiently, but at the end of the day, it's just a numbers game. And oh, the Hydra's get on top of the medevac as well. It does get sniped out of the sky. Uh, Nicorak, he's just really struggling to, to keep Miyamika at bay as Miyamika is getting ready for another big push. Yeah, that is a crucial moment taking out that medevac. Uh, Nicorak needs every part of his forces that he can master, and at the same time, me and Micah is getting to this situation that you can get to when you are the Zerg, when you have such a commanding lead, you can just convert all your economic lead into Banelings and there's so little that you can do as the Terran to uh, fend off this onslaught. Yeah, Lynx come in from the south and from the north. Once again, we see a surround and everything gets taken down. GG, me and Micah takes game number one. Yeah, GG is called and I don't think Nicorat will be too discouraged with that game. He was able to get a lot done with his multi-prong. Just a little bit of an overcommitment with some of the pushes caused him to take a little too much damage from the counter-attacks. But we did see that uh, his drop did so much work, even for a small commitment. So I think that will be encouraging for him. Yeah, I'm a little bit shocked at how well Mia Michael was able to execute that all-in, basically. Um, after such a such a rough early game like it felt like everything was going nickrack's mm. way you know when it came to his drops when it came to his hellions um denying the fourth base sorry getting a kill on the fourth base not even a cancel mm. his drop stealing so much economic damage me and micah was down 55 drones to i think 75 was his opponent he was down 20 workers puppy <laughs> mm -hmm. it was it was crazy but the tank count was looking pretty low and that ling hydra timing as you said is is really awkward really awkward yeah, the drone counts, they mean nothing to Mio. He's almost more <laughs> comfortable when he has that low drone count because it just means that he can confuse you. You think you're ahead, you see just Lings and Hydras coming your way, you see no Banelings, you're just like, oh, I've got Marines, mate. I can shred this. You stand there, you're fighting. It kind of looks like it's going well, and then suddenly the Hydras are still there and all your stuff is gone. It's <laughs> very strange. Yeah, it's really interesting how Miyamika uses that army. Again, no Banelings whatsoever. He he focuses on a decent amount of like a core group of Hydras and then nothing but Lings. And the goal here is just for the Lings to buffer and the Hydras do a surprising amount of damage, especially if there are no tanks to support the buyer. It's really weird to see because we, we don't see that dynamic very often outside of Miyamika, you know? No one else does this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someone should. I don't know. Maybe I should. <laughs> uh, no. You're going to say no. Don't do it, please. Meanwhile, anyway, spawning. In the bottom left-hand corner, it is the Red Terran. It is the Russian Terran playing uh, for Team Psystorm. It is Nicaract. And spawning in the top right hand corner of Inside and Out, we have the Vietnamese Zerg player himself representing the Juggernauts. It is Mio Micah. Ay, ay, ay. Are we going to see more, more Hydras? I'm scared. I'm so scared. <laughs> We'll see if we get there once again. A pull first here from Mia Micah. What we would expect to see, but I, I like as you were saying. I hope Nicorect, I hope his mental state is okay after that game because like it, it mm -hmm. like, well, I, I think we've all been there when you're playing and you're doing everything right. It, it feels like you're doing everything right. You know, you're, you're doing so mm -hmm. well in the game, and then and then suddenly an army rocks up and and you're not fully prepared for it. And I, <laughs> hopefully he's not too discouraged after game one. Yeah, I know what it can be like. You're just playing in the game. You've got your hatcheries. You got them on the one, two, three, four, <laughs> five, all the different keys. Uh -huh. You got your army somewhere. I mean, no one really knows where it is. There's no way to find it. But you know, it's out there. It's doing stuff. Yeah. The numbers are all looking pretty good. And then, yeah, you're just not where you thought you were. Yeah, you have 78 drones. You know, like you got your creep. <laughs> you got your creep going. You got uh, your lunkers. That's, that's out. never happened. <laughs> You've never had 78 drones. Don't, <laughs> don't spread these lies. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Then suddenly, you know, ghosts show up and they snipe everything. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, yeah. yeah we'll Mima, mm -hmm. You go ahead. I was going to say a pretty interesting turn of events here. Mia Micah, despite going for the pool first, makes zero links. Yeah, this is uh, one of the mix-ups you can go for when you're playing uh, these pool-first openings, but 
Um, Nicarak's been very diligent with his scouting. He actually sent out a 17 scout, which is something that I basically only see Terrans do against me and Micah. It's kind of funny. Mm -hmm. um, usually once someone either knows about him or they've played one game against him already and know what kind of player he is, uh, they will be happy to, you know, sacrifice that little bit of economy just to get the extra information. And he does get the information by hanging around with his SEV that there are no links. So he knows that he can go to town with this Reaper. Oh, exactly. And that Reaper already got one drone kill. Can he get a second? He will get a second drone kill for the Spore as well. This Reaper is out of control, punishing Miyamika for his greed. Yeah, so those two Lava that would have been the four Zerglings, uh, but where instead the two drones have been killed. So uh, we do see probably fairly equivalent uh, opening, but the Reaper does get to scout everything, so I don't mind this at all for Nicarak. It also keeps the Queens busy, so there's been no Creep or anything of the sort, but uh, uh, this Reaper is trapped by those uh, Queens, by that movement. Oh, uh, we, see a, to... we wow. see a scan, Papi! We see a scan, and it was a pretty uh, crucial one because he sees the Roach Warren. This is the worst scan. I'm going to tell you why. It's okay. not because it's a bad scan. It's because the Roach Warren's not fitted. <laughs> <laughs> True! Uh, but it will finish. Me and Micah will not cancel it. He is committed to his aggression. He tries to go for a third base, but ooh, he does get denied here. Hellions will get a kill on that drone. Yeah, really nice movement by the Hellions. And he does see uh, a lot of these links. Doesn't see all of them. Uh, but one of the unfortunate effects of these links as well is he does zone out the Hellions from being able to confirm those Roaches, which are in fact coming. So. I would have died to riches if I was playing this game. Ay, 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 exactly. Be like with the mind games. He doesn't cancel his Roach Warren. He reveals Lings. He still has Roaches on the way. As you were saying, Nicorect is unaware of that, but he it did go for a 1 1 1 opener. And with Banshees, I mean, that's the ideal unit that you want to defend against this sort of thing. They are on the way. On the way, though. Bear that in mind. Yeah, he's got these Banshees, even going for a tank as well. So being extra careful, but. Uh, the one thing that does worry me a little bit about his position is he does have a low ground bunker but no high ground bunker. Mm. When you do face these very heavy link compositions, this uh, low ground bunker will go down very quickly if Mia Micah um, gets the jump on it before the SCVs can be pulled. But I love this movement from the Hellions. does manage to find some of these links. Unfortunately, only the same number of links that he's seen already. So. He won't really know how many lings there are out on the map. Yeah, it was really smart of me and Micah to split, spread out his entire army, or was it because he gets spotted here ah. by the Banshee? The Banshee, though, means it's not going to be at, at home to defend. We do have queens across the map, but no spore, no spore ready yet as me and Micah's pushing in. Yeah, the Banshee sees everything. This bunker is going to go down straight away, and there's no bunker on the high ground. The SCVs are pulled, but not in time. Oh, and the wall was not up. This tank goes down straight away, and that tank was so crucial for this defense but oh, exactly he, but he's are there managing to get through yeah are there enough lings that is the question the marines are kind of falling but nick Greg hasn't lost too many workers oh never mind <laughs> yeah uh, yeah <laughs> um he does manage to even after losing that bunker almost straight away has enough marines the macro is clean enough and um just destroys his push really yeah, exactly. On top of that, there was, of course, the Banshee across the map as well that had Cloak. There was no detection ready for me and Micah, so he was also going to start losing drones across the map as well. Very well handled there by Nicorect. Yeah, we'll say something that I'm only just noticing now that we get onto the score screen. There was two minutes of supply cap time for me and Micah, so I wonder if that's actually what caused the push to not work. Something we missed there. There must have been a lot of uh, supply block there, so... Um, I believe maybe that was what contributed to that push being held so easily. It's very possible. It's very possible. Oof. So, yeah, because of that, Mia Micah wasn't able to flood as, as much as he probably would have. Another thing that uh, contributed to that as well, bearing in mind that, you know, a couple of lings were caught up, caught out by those Hellions, and those lings were probably crucial in the attack as well. Everything mm -hmm. matters. Everything counts here when you're going all in the way that Mia Micah was. Now we're going to our ace match. Yeah, we are spawning in here for the ace match on Data Under the Sea. Oh boy, and we'll see who falls under the sea, mate, as we are going into a game <laughs> with one of the best players from the sea. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, and we have spawning up down here in the bottom left-hand corner with the series tied up 1-1. One, one. Will he sink or will he swim? It is the Russian Terran. Nicaract. 
And spawning in the top right hand corner of Data Under the Sea, we have the king of the sea here and now, the Vietnamese Zerg player himself representing the Juggernauts. It is Mio Micah. That's awful, like. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what's his name? I was, I was calling him Captain Atlanta. No, what's his name? Uh, what? Aqu Aquaman. There we go. <laughs> Aquaman? Oh, my goodness. We are watching Little Mermaid. Because Let's go. I think you're a little confused about what happens in the Little Mermaid. <laughs> you're just like, uh, the Little Mermaid, that's the, uh, you know, the Marvel movie. They've True. been going crazy with these Marvel movies. They are, hey, it is Disney. Oh, no. I'm waiting for the Little Mermaid MCU crossover. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Aquaman has to save the Little Mermaid and <laughs> the underwater world from the Decepticons. I don't know. <laughs> <What are> you... <laughs> I, I don't actually watch Marvel. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh... God, has it been that long since I watched The Little Mermaid? I, uh, right, yeah, the, the, the Decepticons, they're, they're a crucial <laughs> part of that, right? Like... <laughs> yeah, we do need uh, Shia LaBeouf and Megan Fox are going to oh. be the crucial part in saving um, the underwater land and returning the crown to the king. <laughs> Like in Spongebob. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you say? Please, please talk about the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he is under the sea. He is under the sea. You're not wrong. You're not wrong, Papi. Uh, <laughs> so we're getting into the. I didn't even get to say. I'm gonna assume that this was a pool for us. I didn't even know. I didn't even know if it. No, it actually, looks like a hatch first. Actually, I don't think it was. I think it was yeah. a hatch first. It was oh my god! The special Mayo hatch first, where he does the uh, extractor trick. But it yeah. was a hatch first nonetheless. Mad man. So this time he will have links to defend against that Reaper. He's not going to be caught with his pants down like he was in the previous game. A much more economic opener from Mio. Yeah, we just see that uh, Reaper Ling Dance coming out from both players. Nice micro from both players. Mio manages to not lose any of his links. Uh, we do see a full scout coming in from uh, Nicorapt here. We do see that he does know the kind of player he's up against, so he is committing this Reaper fully to getting the scout, but does actually manage to get it out alive. Asher, I, I don't I don't know you I don't think you've realized what you've done. Steel is gonna no. make another song. <laughs> oh. Oh, no. He's gonna make a How? SpongeBob song. What have I given him? What do you mean? Oh, song. Yeah. <laughs> he, he lives under the sea, mate. Who <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. You've seen the Starcraft map under the sea. <laughs> Oh, uh, what have oh, you done, man. puppy? What have you done? It just gets worse. <laughs> you've made a terrible mistake, Light. <laughs> you've just gotten me. You've gotten me closer to Steel Mold. You're oh. you're helping this happen. Exactly, mate. It's all gonna culminate in in the end of Phase Four, where you're gonna you're gonna meet Steel <laughs> Mold in a cast, mate. It's gonna happen, and you're gonna sing together. It's gonna be a karaoke session. <laughs> Me and Steel Mold are gonna join in the cast. Someone's gonna do the Thanos click with the fingers, and <laughs> one of us will die. <laughs> oh, no. Speaking, <laughs> speaking of someone dying, uh, I want to direct everyone's attention <laughs> here because wait, what? There was a fusion core on the way. Am I crazy? He, no, oh. I, he had a fusion core on the way. Did it get scouted? No. No, it didn't get scouted. He's playing the Mio game. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to show him the Fusion Core and Castle. I, I don't think there was. It wouldn't really make any sense because he had a Banshee and Cloak on the way. So unless he was hoping to be scouted mm. and then cancel the Banshee and the Cloak. But everything looks pretty standard so far. So yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how that would have fit in, I'm, honestly. I'm going to have to check. I'm going to have to check the replay on that one because I could have sworn. I could have sworn that there was a Fusion Core on the way, mate. But... Uh, I'll keep an eye on the on the on the Twitch chat on the Twitch um, two minutes late for that. Meanwhile, the Hellions do dive in. And, oh my God, they get a, a surprising amount of drone kills. Yeah, nice little dive there. It is a bit of a game that you can play as the Terran, just sending in 
uh, picking a random number of Hellions and just yeeting them into the drone line. It's a very good way to play, actually, to mix up your uh, timings in a series like this. So just get a good amount of damage to the four Hellions and we'll just pick off whatever drones you can with this Banshee here as well. Yeah, a couple of drones do go down, bearing in mind that Cloak is done here for Nicorax. We can maybe even deal a little bit more damage. Just like last time, we do see a Hydrogen on the way here for Mio Micah, uh, but I don't believe the Hydrogen has been scattered yet as it's here at the third base location. Oh, no, it does get seen. Yeah, cute little extractor trick there to save the drone as well, and we do see a lot committed to uh, clearing out this creep. We did see a scan as well going down to clear out this creep. I don't know who he, if he knows who he's playing against. Mio's, <laughs> Mio's strengthened by taking out the creep. He's like, this is where I want to be, Falco. Oh my god, exactly. He doesn't want to spread creep. That's not what he does. Also, I have confirmation uh, watching the stream. He did throw down the fusion core and then he cancelled it. Cancelled it after a couple of seconds. Interesting. <laughs> That's not what I'm looking at the stream. Yaki's already started on the song Who Lives in a Bunker oh, no. Under Data C. Craig the Marine. <laughs> That's incredible. Oh, no, not like this, puppy. Not like this. Meanwhile, the Banshees do dive in. They're going to get a kill here on one of the Queens, not without losing a Banshee in the process, but these Banshees have already paid for themselves. Getting a Queen is just the cherry on top. And is Nick Ratch is going to be ready here for that push? He does have a tank here. Is looking to try and get his third base up and running. Me and Micah, he's pushing out. Yeah, there's a lot of damage getting done by this Banshee. Actually trying to start to chip away at this spawning pool. Maybe just trying to keep the Banshee safe from flying into that spawn at the same time. But uh, we are seeing again going for a heavy Marine push out. And we've seen before what happens when this faces uh, the Ling Hydra of Mio. Things don't quite work out the way you expect them to. I, yeah, I think Mio wants this. I think he wants the army to come with the creep. He wants to engage this army on his side of the map as he has a mass amount of Lings. The majority of them have been avoided by that scan and Mio Mike is getting ready for a mass around. Yeah, this is something that I found myself personally very difficult to deal with on this map. There's so many paths that you can be surrounded from and Mio's done a fantastic job setting this up and decimates the bush. Yeah, he focus fires the tanks and then the medevacs and then the marines fall right after that. Now we see a mass counterattack. Third base is on location. It is not done. We do have one tank here on the low ground, but Nicarak lost so much to that push. Yeah, I don't think it's enough. Just the lings are going to do so much damage. And unfortunately, the lings do get a little bit ahead of the hydras there. So a lot of the stings taken out of the push of Mio, but he is doing nothing but pumping out lings and hydras uh, where Nicarak might be able to think that he can just sit back, defend this third. Uh, I think actually this third is going to be almost a little bit of an overcommitment to the defense. Yeah. As weird as that is to say. Oh, we'll see. I mean, we have a second tank on the way, but it's still on the way. Here we go. Me and Mikey dives on in. And even though he overextended earlier, he should still get a kill on this tank. And he should be able to overwhelm the army here. There we go. The tank does fall, but a second one comes out. Uh, yeah, Nikrak's trading pretty well here, but the numbers are just overwhelming. There's so much DPS coming out from the Hydras, and they're able to take out that extra tank. And there's just not enough Marines, even with the help of the Medivacs, to deal with these Hydras. Uh, and I'm worried about the safety of this CC. Yeah, we've seen this before. A little bit of deja vu here as the CC is now on fire. A couple of boys are being pulled though to try and keep it up, to try and keep it alive. It looks like he will save the third CC. But now me and Micah, he goes straight for the natural. Yeah, this is crazy. It's almost like playing a TVT and all the damage potential coming out from these Hydras. You just can't play it like a normal ZVT. And Oh, so many SEVs are being taken down from Nicarach. These yeah. Hydras are doing work. And with so little units, Mio Mika barely breaks on through. He gets the tank, and with the death of the tank, GG gets called. Mio Mika takes the series 2-1. to one. Wow. Yeah, Mio Mika, uh, as much as he might have frustrations against Terran, was able to uh, persevere against a very strong Terran in the form of Nicarach and finds himself going through to the finals. Wow, GG, well played, congratulations to Mio Micah, again, uh, with very strong Hydra Ling timings, that's kind of what he's known for, we saw Nicarak mm. respond to them in different ways, and again, I do think that he was looking the strongest in the first game, here though, it felt like he played into Mio Micah's hands, it felt like Mio Micah was a little bit more in control here, maybe the rush distance, of course, a little bit shorter compared to Cosmic Sapphire, and things snowballed heavily in Mio Micah's favor mm. after shutting down that first push.
Yeah, that push, I guess he just didn't know what he was up against, but it's very hard to work out uh, the kind of commitment that Mio makes to his units, as it's just not the same kind of timings that you're used to from other Zerglis. Uh, and that push just completely surrounded another feature of the map, Data C as well, um, just was never able to recover. Oh yeah, never able to recover in the end. Again, the C, it rises, mate. It's a little bit too strong here in Sparkling Tuna Cup. Mio Micah moves on to the Grand Finals, and it's going to be North America versus Southeast Asia.